Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. In this video we're going to talk about getting and painting car parts start to finish. So I have this 2018 Chevy Malibu with damage to the right front fender. I'm going to have to replace that fender because fixing it is kind of out of the question it's damaged pretty bad. Now when you're looking for parts or trying to find the part you're going to replace it really worth it to uh, look around and get some good prices. For example, uh, this fender for this car, uh, a good reference point is to call a dealer. Call as many dealers as you can in your area. I got prices that range from $285 to $325 from the dealer. So at least I know roughly what it should cost. Then you do an online search. Uh, look for different places uh, that might sell salvage parts. The issue with that is they might only charge you Let's say you find a cheaper fender, might even paint it the right color for $120, but the expensive part is going to be shipping. I've purchased fenders for $60 and it was $175 for shipping. So buying parts online is going to be expensive for large parts to ship them. Now if you can find one locally, I've tried locally since this only car is only a couple years old, there aren't many of those cars on the lot where I can't buy a part. So I did find a part online for $230 shipping included. So it was only 230 bucks to buy this replacement fender. Let's take a look. So here is a replacement fender. Now when you buy a part that's a replacement part like this and it's brand new, chances are it's going to come already primed and ready to paint. You just have to scuff it up and paint it and that's what we're going to do. If you do buy a part from a salvage yard or online from someone who's, or somewhere who's, where they salvage parts, and if it comes already painted, you run a couple risks. Number one, you don't know if anything was done bodywork prior to that and you don't know if that's the original paint from the factory. If it's the original paint from the factory, you will have to do some sanding to make sure that what you're putting on top of it is not going to eat into the paint and bubble up and, and craze and, uh, and just melt it underneath, number one. Number two, if you buy it and someone had already done some bodywork to it and then there's another coat on top, you have no idea what material they used. So there are some risks. So choose your parts based on what you feel comfortable doing. Uh, I've purchased parts from salvage yards and I thought they were painted from the factory but there must have been an accident, something was fixed, it got repainted and when I put paint on it, the paint underneath melted and it turned out to be a complete mess. I had to sand it all down and redo the whole thing. So choose your parts wisely. I got this one, I'm not going to promote any, uh, any site, but uh, check out a few sites, a simple web search, you'll yield tons of results and like I said, choose your price range and once you get the part, inspect it out of the box to make sure there are no dents None of the tabs, nothing, none of the mounting brackets, nothing is uh, bad. Uh, that way you can send it back. You really don't want to try and, you don't want to fix anything that you bought brand new, especially for $230 for a fender. And depending on where you purchase the part from, you might have a choice of quality. This is a replacement part that's Kappa certified. You see on the inside there's a sticker here that says Kappa. Kappa certified, and it says right on here, Manufacturer certificate, comp certificate compliance to CAPA specifications, which is really important because then you know it's going to fit correctly and look correctly. CAPA simply stands for Certified, Automa Certified Automotive Parts Association. So if it's a, it's a CAPA certified part, you know it's going to fit right. All the mounting tabs are where they're supposed to be, and it's going to look right after you get it painted and put it on the vehicle. Also, you want to check around the part you're replacing. For example, this fender. This is the part of the fender right here that butts up to the bumper cover. Inside there is a plastic clip that goes on the inside here that bolts the two together. That was damaged in that little accident and you want to make sure you get the replacement parts to properly hold the fender. Usually there are plastic clips, that uh, a big clip like this that goes between the fender and the bumper cover. Sometimes they'll be up on the top by the light and depending on how complex the car is, uh, the vehicle, there might be some on the inside here. So check to make sure you get the replacement parts for all the mounting brackets that may have been broken when you had the accident or when the uh, incident occurred. Alright, so now you have your part and you have to paint it. Now I'm not going to tell you what brand to use and what's better than another. Uh, I've painted, um, I think I've painted almost every brand there is including some government chemicals that uh, aren't even available to the public. So I'm not going to tell you buy this brand of paint, but I will make one recommendation. When you're buying all the material to paint from the sealer, 
base coat, clear coat, whatever you're going to be doing for fillers, try and buy them all from the same company. For example, I'm using a Nason brand, the Select Clear, the base maker with a DuPont Chromex, which is a chroma base, uh, base coat, and even the Nason sealer. I'm using them all from the same company or the same brand. The reason I do that is because you are reducing the risk of the components not playing well with each other. There's a chance that there's a difference between uh, components from brand to brand and if you mix a, let's say you, if you mix a certain base coat over another company's sealer, they might not work together. Same thing with clear. These are chemicals. They're going to interact with each other and if you mix chemicals together, it might not work well together. So now you have to find somewhere to get the paint. And all I can suggest to you is to look, do a web search auto paint suppliers near me, auto body supply near me, and find out where you can buy paint. And it might be tough because some places are finicky, they're not going to want to sell paint to an average person, a, a regular uh, comer, uh, re regular residential kind of person. Most of them will though, they're not going to turn you away, it's just a little more expensive. But buying paint from a paint store is a lot like uh, choosing a machine shop when you're building an engine. Now if you watch any of my engine build videos, I talk about choosing a machine shop where you can have someone that you can talk to. When you choose a paint store and you call them and you go in and ask them some questions, you want to have someone that you can talk to because those are the people that are going to help you. You can go in and say, hi, uh, I'm, I'm going to be painting a fender or whatever I'm going to be painting, whatever it is, and I'm using a Harbor Freight spray gun, nothing expensive and I want to paint to match my car, here's the color code. They're going to suggest what to do. They're going to suggest a sealer. They're going to suggest a base coat, clear coat. What's economical? What's the best way to go? They'll even tell you what size tip to use, fluid tip, uh, 1.2, 1.3, 1.6, whatever it is, they're going to recommend that. They're going to recommend you uh, how much PSI. Not only that, when they um, give you the paint, they're going to give you, I got some right here, they're also going to give you uh, mixing cups, and you want the mixing cups that has the ratios on it, and strainers, because you want to strain everything that you spray. Sealer, base coat, clear coat, everything gets strained. So if you have a relationship with the people at the paint store, they're going to help you. If they're not going to help you, go somewhere else, because you want someone who's really going to help you. The people I use, uh, I've been using them forever. I bet you I've been using them probably for close to 35 years. United Coating Supply, which used to be Elwell Auto Supply, uh, here, I'll put their number on the screen if you want to call them because they, some, I think they might ship. If not, they can help you out there in Buffalo, Rochester, a couple other places. Just call them and, and tell, them, tell them Pete's Garage gave you the phone number and uh, they'll be willing to help you. They'll direct you in the right, right, right direction. So find a place to get your paint, have a conversation, and let them help you. That's the key to success. All right, so before you get started with the painting, you got to decide where are you going to paint. And the question is, do you really need a spray booth to get excellent results? And the answer is no. Uh, I use a regular garage for small car parts and a booth for full vehicle paints, but you don't really need a full-size spray booth. I sprayed paint in every kind of booth from a small, just open-air spray booth to million-dollar spray booths that uh, for huge vehicles with waterfalls and huge amounts of airflow. I've even painted cars outside at someone's farm on a calm day and got excellent results. But whatever you choose, if you're going to use, let's say you're going to use your garage at home, all you need to do is make sure you have good airflow. Good airflow means something to remove the air out, to take all the, all the air out, filtered so you don't want to put particulate into the air, and something to have fresh air coming in, which is makeup air. Air in, air out, airflow through across your part and you'll get good results. One thing to keep in mind though, if you do paint in a garage or your home garage, whatever you want to, uh, whatever's important, you, you either want to take it out of the garage or cover it up. When you spray the base coat uh, and the sealer, the overspray is going to get everywhere and it'll sit on there like a dust and that might just dust off when it's dry, but when you get to the clear, the clear is going to stick like glue. And once the clear is on there, it's not going to come off. So if you have anything nice in there or anything you want to protect, take it out or cover it up. Now in order to go buy the paint and get the right color, we got to get the color code off of the car. Every vehicle is different, but the color code for this vehicle happens to be in the trunk underneath here. And there's a sticker and right there on the bottom you can see it says base coat clear coat U384A is my color code. Alright, so I went to get my paint and 
I only bought, well I had to buy 12 ounces because the formula required to mix 12 ounces to get the color correct. Now we're going to talk briefly about color matching. Uh, this, uh, here, and you can see right here, there's the color code right there, 384 black meat kettle effect, which means it has metallic in there. Um, color matching is very, very difficult. Sometimes you can buy paint and it'll match perfectly, sometimes it won't. When you buy a generic brand, if I were just go buy some regular base, not the name brand, if I were to buy like a Nason base or a, a generic base, they will just go off of the color code, which is 384, and they'll mix the color just like that. However, when you start getting more into the name brand, Spies Heckler, uh, or Dirt, uh, the uh, DuPont Chroma Base, th th like that, they're going to use the VIN number to match the color because sometimes during the year, as as a the, the production year goes on, the color changes slightly and they can match the color by the VIN number as close as possible as it's painted in the factory. Does that mean it's going to match perfectly? No, it's not because I've purchased uh, cheaper base coats that match perfectly and then I've purchased expensive base coats that match with the VIN number and the color did not match perfectly. So uh, to say I'm going to spend more money and get the higher quality or name brand paint and it's going to match perfectly is is not always 100 percent i'm going to say nine times out of ten the paint matches dead on and the color matches but there is one or one time one ten percent of the time the color does not match and there's not much you can do other than take a panel of the vehicle with you to the uh, paint mixer the jobber and they can put a camera on it and then it can match the paint perfectly that's the other way you can do it now the question the next question is how much should you buy I'm only painting a fender it doesn't take that much we only need two coats of base on there maybe three just to get a nice even coat for the for the metallic and this gets mixed one to one one part paint one part reducer so if I buy four ounces of paint it's going to yield eight ounces of sprayable paint and eight ounces of sprayable paint is enough to put two coats on a fender uh, I have 12 ounces here and I'm not going to mix all of it up because I want to keep some of it have it left over so you don't need a lot of paint it's not like you can go buy quartz and it's expensive not only that uh, 12 ounces of paint uh, for this color was like 60 bucks and it's not cheap plus you gotta have the reducers to go with it but it's a quality paint I use it all the time and I really like it so now that we talked about the color matching color codes getting ready to paint we're gonna get the fender ready and we're gonna put some sealer on it alright now you need a way to hold the part that you're gonna be painting you could of course lay it down on a table but that makes it difficult to get around and paint uh, I use these stands that are adjustable you can adjust the angle and it's nice because you can just hook the lip for the fender right onto the edge of this thing and it holds it nice and holds it at a good angle to paint. Um, you could also hang it if you wanted to you could probably put some hooks in here and hang it from the ceiling or something and then uh, work on it that way but I use this holds it nice and sturdy and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rough up the entire surface with some scotch brite and then I'm going to clean it with some prep all to make sure there's absolutely no oils left on the surface. Now I'm going to wipe down the entire surface with prep all. This is to remove any grease or oils left behind and everything that might have been uh, small particles from the sanding. And going forward at this point you always want to wear gloves because you don't want any of the oil from your skin to get on the part. Now that the surface is ready to be painted, I'm going to be putting on one wet coat of a sealer select seal. What a sealer does, it creates a chemical barrier between the paint you're going to put on or whatever you're going to spray on top and what's underneath it. So if you purchase a part from a salvage yard that's already painted and you put a sealer on it and the sealer dries and it doesn't bother the paint underneath it, the paint that you're going to put on top of the sealer will not penetrate through and ruin the paint that's underneath it or attack it and it won't start to peel off. Before I do that though I'm going to wipe the entire fender down very carefully with a tack cloth. 
Now before we paint, you got to talk about safety. Always, always, always wear a respirator. Protect your lungs. It's very, very important. Also, you want to wear something over your eyes. I wear glasses, but you can wear goggles. Something to just protect your eyes. And you really should put some earplugs in your ears because the mist will get in your ears. And if it sits there, it can absorb your body. So take care of yourself. Make sure that you're using the proper respirator for what you're spraying. Take care of your body. And when I spray clear, I usually wear a long sleeve shirt and I wear uh, more covering because the clear is extremely sticky and you hate getting it on your body anywhere. When it comes to thinning and reducing or mixing the product you're going to use, always follow the manufacturer's recommendation on a can. I like this product because it comes ready to use right out of the can. It doesn't have to be thinned or reduced. You just open up, pour it right into your spray gun, and don't forget to use a strainer.
here's the finished fender on the vehicle and you can see the color matches perfectly it looks beautiful the clear is nice and smooth and it came out awesome now I've made other videos about painting and when I put clear on I've had some comments where some guys might be or some people might be uh, professional painters and say well there's orange peel and it's you can see it and it's terrible well that's true the trick is not to make it flawless the trick is in making the orange peel match the orange peel that's already on the car. If you go to a new car lot and you look at some of the vehicles, the car comes, some of the vehicles come with orange peel on it. So as you're painting or putting the clear on, you want to try and match the orange peel to the original car so it looks the same. Otherwise it's going to stick out. One's going to be super shiny, the other one isn't it. Now, another thing I want to mention about painting is temperature. If it's 104 degrees out with 95% humidity, not a good day to paint. You want to paint when it's relatively cooler, preferably under 90 degrees, but I understand you can't. And you don't have it iso cold either. You don't have it 32 degrees. You're going to buy the reducers and the materials for the temperature and humidity you're going to paint. Usually a good mid temp is something that I use all the time. And you also may have noticed that um, I used two different spray guns. The sealer and the base coat I sprayed with this gun. This is the Vilba starting line gun. This just happens to have a bigger tip and a little heavier for, uh, spray nozzle. I like this one for the base because uh, with metallic because the fan is bigger and it gives a better dispersion of the metallic in the paint. For the clear I use this gun. It has a smaller fluid tip. I believe it's a 1.4 in here if not a 1.3, a 1.4, and uh, when I turn up the air I get a finer mist out of this and I can control the orange peel as I look at it. As you look at it, you see there's orange peel, you want to beat it down a little bit, you just put a little more material on and let it flow. So I use this for, for clears. You don't have to do that. You can buy one gun, this one gun, uh, with a 1.4 tip, and you can use this to spray everything. You can spray your entire vehicle with it, whatever you're going to do, and it will last you a long time. This is about 130 bucks, I think. Uh, I bought a, a kit with three or four guns in it, maybe 350 bucks. Uh, but you can get this gun, and, and it works, works perfect. This is all you really need. You don't need any fancy. And yes, if you buy a cheap gun at uh, Harbor Freight for, I think they're like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, it's going to work fine. Now, if you're just starting out or you want to fix your own car, I encourage you to at least try. You're going to learn a new skill and save yourself some money in the process. And if you get good enough at it, you might even make some extra money. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.